So today we're going to talk about how lead acid is dying even further. Lithium batteries are getting even cheaper. So this thing is $230, which makes it cheaper than a sealed lead acid battery. And we're talking the cheapest lead acid battery. And a lot of people were complaining for the last few years saying, oh no, I'm not going to trust lithium batteries. I love lead acid batteries. I've been using them for 30, 40 years, and I'm never going to switch to this lithium stuff. Well, guess what? Where did those people go? I think they all just disappeared. I haven't seen them in the comments. I haven't seen them in the forum. I don't know where they went. <laughs> Maybe it's because these last six to 10 times as long. It has safety features that a lead acid does not. You can discharge it all the way down to zero and charge it up to 100%. And they work better in harsh climates. If you have a cold environment, you can get a heated battery. If it's a hot environment, it will last way longer than a lead acid battery. Just check out my older videos where we test batteries, where I leave them out in the sun in Las Vegas for multiple months cycling every single day. And the degradation is nothing compared to a lead acid battery. Also less voltage sag. Also, it keeps a higher voltage even at lower states of charge. And even after this degrades to 80% capacity, you can still safely use it the performance of a lead acid battery goes down over time and the internal resistance increases and also the coulombic efficiency will decrease it becomes less efficient the older it gets but this video is not about lead acid batteries it's actually about this battery the Seacon. this thing is so cheap that it's cheaper than a lead time battery most of the cheap chinese 12 volt batteries for 100 amp hours are around 250 this one is 230 and supposedly it has low temp charging protection so we're gonna rip this thing apart see what's inside and then test out the temperature sensors and before I open it I did a capacity test and it did pass it actually got the same results as a lead time battery but you never know what you're gonna get and this thing it sounds really hollow and it's very lightweight so I don't know but it did pull full capacity, so we gotta open it up and see what's inside. My hopes are never high for these batteries because we found so many bad batteries, especially with this price. This is really low in price. So yeah, let's get started. The blade's broken. So first impressions are actually pretty good. The cells are insulated and spaced apart from each other. The BMS is protected from the cells. We have welded aluminum terminals, really nice connections to the BMS. And we have a temperature sensor. And these are 100 amp hour cells. And they look brand new. So overall pretty good, about the same build quality as a lead time. And now we're charging with eight amps and we're gonna test out this temperature sensor. You would think this is a simple test, but you would be surprised at how many have failed this. Some are improperly programmed, some use the wrong sensor. So yeah, hopefully this one works. Oh, there we go. It actually worked. Now let's try to warm it up. And it's charging again. I'm pretty impatient, so we're going to add another charger. There we go. Turn it on. 88 amps. 101 amps. 102, 99. So let's see how long it can hold this for. And so far, so good. The heat camera says only 95 degrees Fahrenheit on these supply conductors, and everything else is staying relatively cool. So we'll come back in a few more minutes and we'll check one more time. Now we're at about 105 and it's not increasing, so I think it's pretty good. Now for the next test, I'm obsessed with air compressors for testing the surge capacity. So we're gonna see if this thing can start an air compressor. And we have a little outlet here. So now we're gonna connect the air compressor and turn it on. That's pretty good. Let's test the surge with a different meter. 171 amps. It didn't seem to struggle. Let's try the car lift and we'll measure the inrush. Here's the car lift and let's turn the inverter on. Now I'm gonna run over there and turn on the switch. Wow, it actually worked. That's crazy. Holy cow, 316 amps. You know what? The lie time could not do that with this inverter. 
This is the first battery that can do that. 316, it was struggling. That sound is not normal, but the fact that it can do that and push 300 amps, usually they can't even start an air compressor, let alone a car lift. This is the best performing surge capacity 100 amp hour battery we've tested. Let's do a continuous draw test. Let's add 100 amps continuous and see what happens. 140 amps, holy cow. 115 to 100 to 115 amps. It's oscillating. And it seems to run it just fine. Now we're at 111 degrees, but no considerable increase over the charging test. It is doing very good, still. This is crazy. Let's see if the overcurrent protection actually does work. So we're gonna crank this up and see if it turns itself off. 100, 200 amps. Maybe the inverter will shut down first. It's been a few minutes and it's still pulling 200 amps and it's not tripping. I hope it doesn't start to melt. I don't think the overcurrent protection is programmed properly. No wonder it could do that surge capacity. There's no overcurrent protection. Oh, there we go. But was that the inverter or the battery? Just to verify. We're at 12 volts, so you know what happened. That was a low voltage protection. That was not overcurrent protection. And it should have tripped within the first minute of that 200 amp load. So I don't think this has overcurrent protection built in. Let's see if they say it on their website. Yeah, it says overcurrent protection. Oh, that's weird. It says 6,000 cycles here in the picture. But if you scroll down, it says 5,000 cycles. I just hate when Chinese advertising is not consistent and it doesn't say what the overcurrent protection is. And here's their website. Let's see if we can find it there. Max continuous discharge current is 150 amps. Max discharge current for five seconds is 600 amps. That's why it was able to lift the car. Maybe it is rated correctly and it's just working really well. Holy cow. I mean, 200 should technically trip it, but it's pretty close to its actual max continuous discharge rating. And it seems like all the hardware could handle that current just fine. They also have the proper size conductors, but I do want to be able to trip the overcurrent protection. Let's charge it up again. All right, I'll be back in 20 minutes and we'll do the final test then. And we are back, so we're gonna turn these off. 220, 222. All right, it's been over a minute at 226, and it still hasn't tripped. So this does not have overcurrent protection. That's pretty much the only downside. Everything else is incredible with this battery. All right, let's turn this stuff off. And Battleborn is still selling their batteries for like $7.99 or something. And you can buy one of these. That is crazy. Just the performance alone, man. Now let's do a quick comparison to a newer Lee Time. So the first thing that I notice is this one has green straps and these corner holders. This one does not. It only uses tape. Next, this has two heat sinks and FETs on both sides. This one only has it on one side, but this one is thicker. And it seems to have about the same number of FETs on both. Next, the cells look pretty much the same actually, and the connections are very similar, but these ones are glued. These ones are not glued, and these are really hard to take off. But these all have lock nuts on here as well, so that's pretty good. But the balance cable on this one seems better than this. This looks a little messy. But performance wise, this one just blew us away. And this one comes with low temp charging protection for their cheap model. But this one actually costs more. This is the Bluetooth model. This is the fancy one. This is their cheapest one. So yeah, for the build quality for the price is very impressive. Now the next thing we need to look out for is long-term reviews to see if this BMS can hold up because this is still a new product. And even though I'm excited if there's lots of reviews that come in that this BMS fails or there's quality control issues, one out of 10 is just bad, then I can't recommend it either. But so far, pretty promising results. I think this is absolutely an option that we can consider. This is very impressive. And I have a long-term test of a lead time in my epoch, but I should just throw some of these in there and see how well it does. I'm actually cycling these batteries in over 130 degree temperature in a hot trailer. 
and the results have been pretty darn boring. A lot of people don't realize how durable LFP is, especially thermal stability wise. Anyways, pretty fun video. This did really well and I was actually impressed and the low tip charging protection actually worked. So personally, I would try this out. If you have a big bank and you want to throw some more batteries in there in parallel, check these batteries out. These are pretty good. And if you have any issues, please let me know in the message board or comment below. And I will read your comments and all the messages, especially if you tag me. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.